Okay, uh, welcome to client server architecture. Uh, this is our first lecture. Uh, hope that we can uh, get to understand some of the basic concepts of uh, client server architecture. Uh, first, uh, in this lecture, we will do some introduction. Uh, we will uh, uh, talk about the client server architecture, talk about uh, what does it do. We'll try to uh, define the server architecture, client server architecture, why do we need it, what are the purposes, what are various applications that we use in our daily life, client server architecture, uh, how do the components of client server architecture interact. Uh, then we will talk a little bit about the protocols which are necessary for the client server architecture to work. Uh, what do these protocols do? Why do we need them? How they work? How do we protect our uh, applications through the protocols? Are there any limitations and some conclusions? So basically this is the outline of the first lecture. Hopefully we'll uh, go through it uh, fast and quick so we can get to our business of doing client server architecture. Now, what is a client server architecture? What is exactly we mean by a client server architecture? Actually, uh, in a nutshell, it is a system. A system means a collection of components. Uh, there are many parts. Any system usually uh, uh, consists of several parts. The client server system consists of uh, uh, which is a system that links a client and some server through what we call a network or networks. So in, in a nutshell, client server architecture is a system that links clients and servers together. What are the servers? What are the clients? I will show that. We'll talk about them in, in, in a bit. Uh, the client server architecture basically it describes a computing model. So it is a computing model. It's a model in which computation is done. Uh, and this model allows the development of a computerized system where the model basically it's a distribution of some functions. So we have uh, some functions and those functions are distributed. Distributed means they exist in many different places. And those functions can be used to uh, to execute one or more tasks on behalf of one or more clients. So it is uh, it's a model of distribution distribution of functions between two types of independent and anonymous processes. These processes, one of them is called server, and the other one is called a client. So we have servers and the clients. And basically, this is the idea. So, the basic idea, we have a system. The system has two sides, two parts. One part is called the server, and the other part is called the client. Now, the server could be many. The clients could be many. Let's further define. So, now, we have what we call a server. So, this is my server. We have a client. This is my client. Or this could be one or more so this is called a server process this is called a client process and here is my network this is my network this network which exists in the call it in the cyber space called uh, in the net in the web uh, world so this network which has many protocols it has uh, switches routers etc uh, our business is not to work with networks or to design networks in this class but we have to understand that there is a network and across the network we have servers we have clients now the uh, server provides service services what are the types of services provided by the what are the type of services provided by the uh, 
server you could imagine almost any type of service files give me a file x give me a file y provide me with a text file uh, download an ftp uh, pdf file through ftp services uh, give me a printer uh, which is shared by many clients I want to print a file and this file exists somewhere on a server which could be linked to my computer or linked to some other computer uh, fax services when fax was common in the uh, framework of communication give me some multimedia communications give me a video give me image give me uh, uh, audio file etc uh, chat services email services email services uh, paying bills like if I were here could these days this is also client server all mobile applications smartphone applications that we use on a daily basis including email chat Instagram uh, uh, and what have you uh, all of these are services and the client of course a client makes a request to one of these services I said ask for a file ask for a printer ask for fax ask for multimedia this is what the client will do it will ask for services and the server this server will provide the service before I proceed any further think of the server not as a computer think of it as a process as something that executes a function and provides a service so in a nutshell uh, a client server model or client server system and in the and the core of the system is a network that links one or more clients to one or more servers and the server provides one or more services based on the request of a client so we have a client that uh, requests a service and the service is requested through the network and uh, the server will provide the service at one point or another either immediately or in a delayed uh, uh, fashion now as I mentioned already clients in principle can request service this is a client it can request a service from this server this is a server or from this one or from this one or from any other server so one client can actually and this is my network it can go through the network and request a service from uh, one server that provides let's say date and time give me the time of the day another server that has uh, files I request a file another server that has database applications another server that provides a PayPal uh, service where I can pay through the system and also this server can in principle uh, serve this client client A client B client C client D client N multiple clients one or more and of course the number of clients can be served by a server at any point of time this has to do with performance and capacity rather than with uh, protocols in principle a server can serve uh, unlimited number of clients and the client can request a service from unlimited number of servers the only thing that controls uh, how many clients can be served by a server at any point of time is the capacity capacity means the memory of the uh, server the CPU power of the server and the network bandwidth available if we don't let's say if we if all the clients request at any point of time the total number of data that can be uh, that can uh, go through is one gigabyte let's say they all request files in the amount of one gigabyte and the bandwidth here can serve only 0.5 gigabytes per unit time then these clients cannot be served at one point of time some of them has to be delayed يعني بمعنى آخر إنه عدد الكلاينتس هون لازم يكون كم من من حيث المبدأ بإمكانه يكون عدد لا متناهي من الكلاينتس ولكن اللي بيحكم السيرفيس هون هو حقيقة الباندويت يعني الحجم الديتا اللي كمية الديتا اللي بنقدر نقولها بلحظة واحدة أو حجم وقوة السي بي يوز اللي موجودة على السيرفر أو الميموري الذاكرة اللي موجودة هون اللي احنا بحاجة 
تكون موجودة عشان يشتغل السيستم. Anyway, now part of the rationale. Why do we need a client server? Why do we need this? What is our rationale? What is our reason? شو السبب؟ شو اللي بخلينا إحنا نقسم السيستم تبعنا as a client server؟ ليش ما أعملوا one application عبارة عن برنامج طويل؟ افترض انه بشتغل على داتا بيس انا عندي برنامج وعملت الداتا بيس وعملت التيبلز وعملت الفورمز وعملت الطرق اللي انا لازم اعمل اكسس فيها للداتا بيس اي كان دو ذات بس ان برنسبل هير از ون ايشو سبيشاليزيشن التخصص ان سبيشاليزيشن ا كلاينت ا كلاينت اللي هو المستفيد سبيشاليزز ان يوزر انترفيس يعني الانترفيس اللي انا بدي اعمله ليش انا اروح اغلب السيرفر واغلب حالي اني اعمل ديزاين لانترفيس لكل البرنامج انا الانترفيس بحاجته على الاب تبعي افترض انه الكلاينت تبعي is an application it's a mobile application smartphone application فالديزاين تبع الانترفيس انا لازم احطه هون على هذا الجهاز انا اي دونت نيد تو باذر ماي سيرفر with the, all the complexities of designs and interfaces. So the user interface is something, it's something that has uh, to do with the client. So the client can be specialized in building the interface. Also, the servers can be specialized in managing data and application logic. يعني بمعنى آخر, you know, the application itself, which I require, let's say my application is to pay bill. To pay my bills, أدفع فواتير الكهرباء والمي. دفع الفواتير الكهرباء والمي. ال formulas, المعادلات اللي بستعملهم أنا علشان أحسب الفاتورة وأحسب التاكس وأحسب الضريبة وأحسب قديش بدي أدفع. هذا logic. هذا logic أنا بحطه على السيرفر. هون على التليفون تبع الابلكيشن بحط عند ال buttons اللي هي pay bill بيجيني window. What type of bill you want to pay? Electricity or water? مي أو كهرباء. بختار الكهرباء. فاتورة أي شهر؟ شهر تسعة ألفين وسبعة عشر. بختار الفاتورة. هون then I click a button. البطن هذا بروح على السيرفر. والسيرفر هناك بعمل لي computation. فهون صار في عندي specialization. صار عندي تخصص في ال client بتخصص بشيء والسيرفر بتخصص بشيء ثاني. هذا one idea, one reason why we need to split. Also Other reason is the sharing. Many clients can be supported by a few servers. يعني مثلاً today, the chat, for example, in order to do the WhatsApp chat, you have about two billion people. All of these are clients. The number of servers which are used to serve these clients is way below the number of clients. If I were To build a chat system between each two individuals, I am going to chat with you and you will chat with me. So we build an application. So we will have about two billion applications. This is ridiculous. It, it, it's, it simply is not feasible. So the idea, when we have more clients than servers, I can have four or five servers that serves a million clients. That's called resource sharing. Often data and logic are shared among application users يعني بمعنى آخر uh, in some, apl some applications we have some files which are shared everybody wants to use let's say uh, in a university system the student profile so student profile means his name his ID his uh, telephone number his email his uh, specialization it's a file this file could be needed by the registration Could be needed by the faculty of the student, could be needed by the administration, could be needed by someone external who wants to verify the nature of the students and their numbers. That's very normal. So because these files are shared, then it's only reasonable to have uh, uh, these resources, in this case these files, shared by so many clients clients via or through a, uh, through a server or multiple servers. 
Now, what type of uh, uh, communications or services available? Client server, this is my client. Client, this is a server. That's a network. And this network here, uh, that's my network, which is which sits between the client and server. That's one theory. That's one way of doing business. This is not the only way. That's what we will be doing through this course. But that's not the only way. There is yet another way. Now note that I have this client, second client, third client, and I have a server. Note that here I show the server as a computer. In reality, a server is not necessarily a computer. The computer hosts a server. So in, on the server there could be many uh, software servers. Yani I could have a file server, I could have data server, I could have a, a telephone number server, I could have email server, I could have a chat server, all of these within this host. So this is called a host server. The other type is I want to collaborate with my colleague. This is guy, this guy sits here, and he wants to collaborate with this one. Note that this link, this link is established between these two guys. So this is called peer-to-peer. -peer. Although I have a big network, but this big network allows me to establish a one-to-one -one connection. So this one is talking to this one. This is called peer-to-peer. -peer. This one can talk also to this one. I can, I can have two clients, this one, this one, talking to a third person. But all of them, each one of them acts as a, as a client and a server at the same time. But this is called peer-to-peer. يعني one to one يعني كل واحد بتكلم مع الثاني and you have the same application here the same application here and they can talk to each other all freely that's another type of communication now the distinction between a client server as uh, this is a client server and this is my peer to peer okay you can check my client server it's asymmetric relationship يعني العلاقة ما بين the client and server ليست متماثلة يعني they don't have to be the same they can be different the client can be a mobile application the server can be a windows application the client can be a windows and the server can be unix or mac uh, application or system on the peer to peer those can be symmetric relationship. Yeah, the client with server they bought. They all have the same application. This is a Windows, this is Windows, this has SQL database, that one has SQL database and so on. Though they are symmetric. And the here the client predominantly makes request. Request and the server makes replies. In the uh, client server application, as I said here uh, let me redo that and uh, put it this way okay the client usually makes the request and the server makes the replies note that I use the word predominantly يعني أكثر الأحيان أغلب الأحيان بمعنى آخر أحيانا السيرفر may request something from the client أحيانا doesn't have to be all the time that the client is the only one that makes the request the server can also makes a request okay whereas in peer-to-peer -peer, the client makes request server provides service the server or the other side let me not call it the server the second side makes a request and the first side makes the service and so on so those are the major distinctions this is an example of a client server this is uh, email application. Everybody uses emails. Well, today we use it quite often, much less than before. Today we use WhatsApp, Messengers, Signal, uh, Instagrams, uh, all ways of communication, which are which are uh, more real time than email. Email is an online, but it's not real time. It can be. Like I can send an email now, I um, the system takes my email, sends it to the email server, the email server sends it to the uh, other 
side of the uh, of the room and then eventually later on maybe a day later or one hour later بيجيك الريزلتس من الطرف اللي انت بعثت له ايميل today the chat systems are much more better so now here is a server i call it an email server this is a place where this is going to uh, uh, this server which has an email server application by email server application means this guy knows the address of this one the address of this one and the address of so many let's say I could have uh, many clients here I could have one more clients here I could have uh, one like this one here and uh, I have one more all of these communicate through the email okay now this server the business of the server is to uh, have the an address for each of each of the people who are connected to the email server uh, it has the address means it's the IP address and where to locate uh, the clients uh, it can have a, a storage system where the email messages which goes from this client let's say to this client here through this here this line this communication uh, link uh, it goes through the server I take a copy so that in the future if there are disputes I will know what type of message has done so this server uh, this client will request a service from the server says oh I would like to talk to my friend uh, Ali uh, where is your friend Ali my friend Ali is a gmail uh, dot com his address is uh, Ali dot uh, Muhammad at gmail.com that's where his address oh where is this Ali dot Muhammad at gmail.com oh this guy has some tables which are routers to solve this address to find where this guy is exactly at so it will build the routing connection in order to find this client and send the email to him all of this is done at the server the client doesn't have to do any of that so the email client sends message to the server the message is stored on pop uh, server here or on IMAP or on another type of servers or uh, exchange server and then will be sent to this client after I find the actual address of this client this is a typical application of a client server uh, system that's a, a chat application it's the same thing I have a, a chat server which aggregates uh, typing from all users and sends to all clients here this client one I would like to talk to this one from this person to this person through the chat so this person name is uh, Muhammad Abdul Azim this one is Ali Abdul Sami Ali wants to talk to Muhammad uh, Muhammad has an address this chat server will know its address its exact address through the phone number and the phone number is linked to an IP address it will find him wherever this guy is so actually the server this client will send a message to this server this is called a chat server the message says hello I would like to talk to you this morning Lamin al message Rayah Rayah Lali had a بيروح نوتيفيكيشن من هون السيرفر ويل سند ا نوتيفيكيشن لهذا الرجال اللي هون تيلينج هيم يو هاف ا مسج اند ذس وان ويل ستارت ريدينج ذا مسج فروم ذا سيرفر ايذر ذا مسج ستيز اون ذا سيرفر اور ويل جيت داونلودد تو ذا كلاينت هير ديبندينج اون هاو ذا ابلكيشن از بيلت اون ذا سيرفر سو ذس از ذا ايديا اوف ا تشات سيرفر now in a client server architecture we say the client server architecture is based upon hardware and software components that in interact to form a system yani this is a very general statement so of course there is a hardware there is software and there is interaction between these two so and they form a system of communication and there is called the front end application which we call the client any computer process that requests a service and there is the back-end application 
uh, which is the server which is any computer processing uh, any type of processing which provides service to the client and of course there is a communication so in a nutshell there is a client that requests the service there is a server that provides the service and there is a communication that provides the communication between the cooperating partners how do components interact it's very simple client process for example in a database system assuming my server is a database and the database usually acts based on SQL or SQL statements select statements uh, update insert delete compare uh, do a report all of these are uh, ways of accessing a database so this is my database this is my database server that's my client which makes a SQL it says select from all tables or select star dot star from all tables all the applications or select uh, a name where name equal Muhammad from the server or select a student where a student grade is above 70 and so on and this communication middleware or the network will take my SQL statement will send it to the database database will send back the data to the communication middleware or through the network and from the network it goes to the client now this is interesting because now if I have one more client like this and the client let's say has uh, another uh, SQL statement where he wants to check for data from the database so these two clients can request data from the database so now I don't have to have two databases one for each client it's one database that serves all and so on so this is another example of uh, client server systems this is yet a more general this is called the host architecture okay. this is where servers think of Google has thousands or millions of servers or farms of servers so each one of these is like this it's a server that has many services it could have a web server application logic and there could be some database or DB, some uh, database management system or relational database management system okay and all of these can be structured in one way within the server now here we have web browser as my client that will come and ask for some uh, data from the web and the web will go through some application logic and the application logic goes to the database management system and so on now from this one this guy you could have thousands or millions of these think as I said of Google when you want to search for an item on Google the client will be sitting sitting behind his computer or with his mobile application on the smartphone will uh, through a web browser or some application will request a data the data will find its way to one of the servers and the server will provide the data and put it back to the client it's a very interesting model as I mentioned we will uh, talk about network protocols because network protocols are very important for our uh, study and the programming of this course uh, a network protocol is a set of rules that determine how messages between computers are sent, interpreted and uh, processed for example uh, the uh, rules can be if I start a message then the message starts with two zeros if I end, uh, end a message then the message ends up with one zero one for example this is uh, just a protocol or a protocol which says uh, there is uh, some data going over the link and this data will come at a rate of 64 bits per uh, milliseconds for example or per second that's a protocol if something comes faster or slower than that then that's not me uh, and there are many forms of the protocol as a result of the client server computing boom many mainframes and mid uh, range computers are now independent support 
uh, for more open network standards such as TCP IP. Now TCP IP or uh, UDP, uh, TCP stands for Transport Control Protocol over IP Internet Protocol which allow direct access from client server PC based. Of course there are more protocols uh, which we can uh, later talk about uh, where I was uh, right here. The selection of a network topology and the protocol is one of the most critical decisions in client server systems development. Yani are you going to use peer-to-peer -peer network, or mesh network, grid network, uh, maybe uh, some star network, some ring network, it depends what type of network you will use and what type of protocol, whether it's TCP IP or UDP protocol, that's up to you. Uh, and all of these are driven by the uh, uh, performance, power, and so on. Uh, one of the most common protocols, as I said, is the TCP IP, which is the transport control protocol over IP uh, internet protocol, uh, which is the official communication protocol of the internet. There is also the Internet Packet Exchange Sequence, IPX, SPX, and there is the UDP, the Unreliable or uh, Uni uh, Unit Datagram Protocol, which we will be use both TCP and uh, UDP. Okay, that's just other form of uh, uh, applications uh, and systems where client server is very common, enterprise to enterprise, there's consumers. Uh, today eBay is one of the largest uh, consumer based client server architecture. You have uh, Amazon.com, you have all of these are very uh, widely known uh, systems. In the past, th this is a software uh, software for you, this is for distribution of soft software. Today this type of sy system is very widely used in cloud computing where the cloud is used to uh, uh, to provide as many software, services, storage and so on. Uh, database servers are very common. You have a database, you have web servers, some logic to to interpret and understand what type of uh, the database, what type of language it understands and bring back the data to the uh, clients. Uh, it's a very uh, common uh, diagram where you have the logics called customer logic, agent logic, technician logic. These are all types of logics that sits between the clients and the database servers. It's very interesting uh, design. We have all types of designs. We have the book distribution. Amazon was one of the most important distribution of books for all the world. Today you can have, uh, of course, it's connected to uh, financial institution banks where people pay the bills and uh, for shipping and distribution, book distribution centers where all these uh, interact with the major server here that says, oh, this client order five books, the five books are being paid by uh, through this financial institution, and the distribution uh, unit is going to send to ship the data from here to this client. So all of this is uh, very interesting models. Uh, again, this another type of model where all the customer logic are in one place, all the fulfillment logic is another place, and so on. Okay, this is the same system for the book for you system. You can go and check it up in uh, Google and find all types of uh, organizations for the same system. That is, uh, again, this is work. your customer inter enterprise between enterprises, your enterprise system, and all of this goes in the same uh, directions as I said. So in the, in the bottom line, the client server architecture is a system that has clients, a system that has servers, and in between there is a network that provides the communication between all of them. And in order to allow the communication to go through very well, you must have a logic 
to be able to understand what the client wants and what type of language the server understands resolves these differences and provide the service in the best manner a man could uh, a, a system can can manage uh, data so that's the way the client server architecture on the client server system and model works uh, in the next few lectures we will go in more details about how the client communicates with the server how the server communicates with the client and how the data is being interpreted and so on uh, and i would like to stop right here thank you for listening to this uh, lecture